Sing praise to our God, all you who fear God, both small and great. For now salvation and strength have come, into the power of his Christ. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Today we celebrate Tuesday in the fifth week of Easter. Still, the great grace of the resurrection overflows. Our joy and our renewed life fills our hearts. And so as we prepare to celebrate the sacred Eucharist today, let us first call to mind our sins and ask for God's mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament so to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, grant your people constancy in faith and hope, that we may never doubt the promises of which we have learned from you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, some Jews from Antioch and Iconium arrived and won over the crowds. They stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing that he was dead. But when the disciples gathered around him, he got up and entered the city. On the following day, he left with Barnabas for Derbe. After they had proclaimed the good news to that city and made a considerable number of disciples, they returned to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch. They strengthened the spirits of the disciples and exhorted them to persevere in the faith, saying, it is necessary for us to undergo many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. They appointed presbyters for them in each church, and with prayer and fasting commended them to the Lord in whom they had put their faith. Then they traveled through Pisidia and reached Pamphylia. After proclaiming the word at Perga, they went down to Italia. From there they sailed to Antioch, where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work they had now accomplished. When they arrived, they called the church together and reported what God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. Then they spent no little time with the disciples. The word of the Lord. Your friends make known, O Lord, the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your friends make known, O Lord, the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. Your friends make known, O Lord, the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Making known to men your might and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is a kingdom for all ages, and your dominion endures through all generations. Your friends make known, O Lord, the glorious splendor of your kingdom. May my mouth speak the praise of the Lord. May all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Your friends make known, O Lord, the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. Christ had to suffer and to rise from the dead, and so enter into his glory. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. 
You heard me tell you, I am going away, and I will come back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it happens, so that when it happens you may believe. I will no longer speak much with you, for the ruler of the world is coming. He has no power over me. But the world must know that I love the Father, and that I do just as the Father has commanded me. The Gospel of the Lord. We can speak in broad terms about persecution, we can speak about uh, different church persecutions, we can talk about the misunderstanding of persecution and martyrdom in the early church. Acts of the Apostles, we start to see more and more killings. Paul himself endured attempted murder, that they did not like what he was saying, and so they stoned him, and they thought he was dead and left him, but that he survived. And if we read the city names carefully, we see that he goes off to kind of be healed, but then he comes back into those same cities where he was stoned to death and continues to preach. There's often in my own heart and soul when I look that I wish that I had that courage, that resiliency. When we look at small persecutions, the misunderstandings, the gossips, the misunderstandings, people that attack, um, I shy away, I run, and I never want to come back again to where that happened. I never want to see those people or think about them again. And to be able to forgive, to be able to move on, to be able to hold fast to the faith in our hearts. For me, when attacked, for me, when judged or gossiped about, it kind of, it just shakes the core of my being. I wish I was stronger, but I'm not. It shakes my whole understanding of the world, of my own life. It's just, it's very sad that just someone saying a misthought word someone misjudging, that it just is this existential crisis for me. But the, the repeated mantra in that is the reminder to me of these different words of scriptures, not only of seeing that others have been attacked and killed and that I'm still alive, but also this reminder of the resurrection, that I've continuously been brought back because I rely on God that I continuously repeat my prayers, that some days it's this frantic repetition of many, many, many thousands of our fathers. But it is always through this trust that Jesus will get us through in these small ways each day that will prepare us for the bigger decisions of facing others. Jesus promises us, us that he leaves us his peace. And there are days when I don't feel that peace but returning once again and again back to him, trusting that he will bring me this peace. I found with time that I return back to an even keel. And I can continue to love and serve. But no matter what, no matter what goes on, we are still called to be people of peace, still called to be people of love, still people who reach out to others, not closed in on ourselves. So though we are separated, though we are spending all this time by ourselves and shut off, we still reach out in loving prayer to others, not posting things to attack anyone, not posting our frustration and our anger, but taking that to God so that he can give us the peace we need to rise again and face each day as it comes. Nourished by his word, let us bring our prayers and petitions before God, who is merciful and rich in compassion. For the church, the people of God, may the Lord continue to strengthen us in faith and charity. Let us pray to the Lord. For our civic leaders, may wisdom and justice guide them in their work for the common good. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who face chronic illnesses or pain, for those struggling with the coronavirus, their families, and the unsure anxiety of our times, may the Lord strengthen and encourage them in their trials. Let us pray to the Lord. 
for our own faith community. May all our hearts be filled with the peace only Christ can offer. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who have died, especially Giuseppe Galliota, the intention of this Mass, may, they, may the Lord grant them eternal joy in his kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Merciful God, hear these prayers we bring humbly before you, and answer them in accordance with your holy will. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. And the mystery of this water and wine may come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, it entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world, free me by this, your most holy body and blood, from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments, and never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Though you are unable physically to receive the Eucharist, you can still receive the fullness of the graces of the Blessed Sacrament by making a spiritual communion. To make your spiritual communion, please repeat after me this prayer by St. Alphonsus Liguori. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
If we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with Christ. Alleluia. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. As you were not hearing any responses, uh, Deacon Brian is uh, on retreat this week getting ready for priesthood ordination. We don't have a date yet for priesthood ordination, but um, he is with uh, his classmates in Cincinnati, and Cincinnati is having their ordination this Saturday uh, in private, just parents are invited. Um, our own, we're delaying so that we can still have uh, the gathering and welcome in the church. But please keep him in your prayers throughout this week as he is keeping all of all of you in his prayers as he prepares for ordination. I'm also kind of taking retreat this week. I still come in uh, to pay the bills and to celebrate Mass, but the rest of the time kind of staying tucked away with spiritual reading and prayer, keeping all of you parishioners as well as all those who look to us in my prayers and my own spiritual well-being and renewal as well. Take the time to do some holy reading. Take the time to turn off the TV, the computer at times, to read something holy, the Bible, to take a rosary, to ponder the cross, to whatever it is that you are drawn to. And take the time to just be a quiet alone with God before everything restarts again and we're back into busyness. A quietness where you can hear God's voice, where you can hear him speak into your heart, offering you peace. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ.